as a token of our appreciation, may I request our Honorable Chancellor and Honorable Vice Chancellor to kindly present memento to Honorable Vice President of India. I request Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir to kindly felicitate our Honorable Chancellor Sir. I request Registrar Sir to kindly felicitate Honorable Justice Mr. G. Raghuram Sir. Thank you, sir. I now invite Professor Dr. V.C. Vivekanandan, sir, the Vice Chancellor of Vidyatama National Law University, to kindly deliver his welcome address. <coughs> it is with immense pleasure that we extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to our esteemed chief guest. Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Tankarji, on this momentous occasion of his maiden visit to our university. In the ancient Roman times, there is a word called triumvirate, which means three people holding power. It goes Caesar, Pompey and others. Let me tell you, our Honorable Vice President, is triumvirate rolled into one person. The reason being, he was part of legislature, he was a parliamentarian and a minister. He was part of executive because he was a honorable minister earlier. And now, as a senior counsel of the Supreme Court, he was also part of the judiciary. So, in my opinion, he is rolled into one, a triumvirate, holding all the three areas. <laughs> Sir, it is also a providence that you are at SNLU named after an illustrious predecessor to you, Justice M. Hidayatullah, the former Vice President of the country. The audience here require no elaborate introduction of your good self as they watch you participating proactively with institutions especially, disarming the fiery tempers with your charm in the Rajya Sabha, and speaking from your heart on diverse subjects. So, welcome you, sir. We welcome you with affectionate caveat that your short visit today is a prelude to a longer time you would promise to spend with us in the coming days. Today, we have with us our beloved Chancellor, Honorable Chief Justice of Chhattisgarh, Sri Ramesh Sinhaji, who mentors and guidance of SNLU affairs. Our Chancellor, coming from Allahabad, the biggest court with a historical antecedent, brings him the kind of wisdom and acumen to guide our affairs. His presence is also a beginning of a more in-depth interaction with students in the coming days. Sir, we welcome you on behalf of HMA Fraternity. We also have on the dais Honorable Justice Goda Raghuram, a former Justice of the United Andhra Pradesh High Court and a former Director of the National Judicial Academy. He is a jurist with wide interest, I would call it, from anthropology to Zen and guides HNLU as a member of the Executive Council and Finance Committee. To me, he is a friend, philosopher and guide. Welcome you, sir, to HNLU. I also extend my hearty welcome to the beloved students of HNLU, Kalinga University, IPM faculty from HNLU, IPM, Kalinga, and my own colleagues, including my registrar, Dr. Vipan Kumar, deans, everyone who have gathered here. And so we all look forward today to the distinguished lecture by our honorable 
Vice President. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Ramesh Sinhanji, Chief Justice of High Court of Chhattisgarh and Chancellor HNLU to share his opening remarks. A very good evening to all of you. <clears throat> Honorable the Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Dhankarji, Honorable Justice Raghuraj, uh, former judge of Andhra Pradesh High Court and Director of National Judicial Academy, Professor V.C. Vivekanan, Vice Chancellor of HNLU, Registrar of the University, esteemed faculty members, distinguished guests, and dear students. It is with immense pleasure and a sense of profound privilege that I extend a warm welcome to each one of you on this momentous occasion. As we have the distinct honor of hosting the Vice President of India at Hidayatullah National Law University, your journey and commitment to public service serves as a guiding light for the aspiring legal minds seated before you today. We are eager to hear your thoughts and insights on the whole role of legal education in shaping the future of our nation. And we are confident that your wisdom will be a source of inspiration for all of us. Legal education, as we all know, is cornerstone of a just and equitable society. It empowers individuals to understand, interpret, and shape the laws that govern our nation. In the recent years, we have witnessed significant transformations in the field of legal education driven by technological advancements, globalization, and shifts in societal expectations. These changes have presented us with both opportunities and challenges. As the Chancellor of HNLU, I am proud to say that our institution has been at the forefront of the addressing these challenges and embracing the opportunities to provide equality education that prepares our students for the legal profession of the future. Our shared vision for the excellence in legal education finds resonance in the esteemed presence of the Vice President of India, whose commitment to principles of justice and governance inspires us all. Hidayatullah National Law University takes great pride in providing a nurturing environment for the academic excellence and the holistic development of our students. Your visit in reinforces our commitment to foster an atmosphere of learning, critical thinking, and ethical practice. In the hallowed halls of HNLU, where knowledge is cultivated, legal minds are shaped, and idols are nurtured, your visit stands a testament to the importance of legal education in our national progress. This program is not merely a gathering, it is a celebration of the values that bind us together, the pursuit of truth, justice, and the fortification of our legal foundation. As we embark on this event, let us reflect on the significance of our collective responsibility to impart knowledge and uphold the ideals that contribute to the development of an informed, just, and equitable society. In conclusion, I want to express my gratitude to the Vice President of India for choosing to come over to HNLU to interact with young minds and teachers who shape and inspire them, and I am confident that his insights will enrich our understanding and inspire the legal fraternity present here today. Thank you, and may this event mark the beginning of meaningful dialogue, shared learning, and strengthened bonds within our legal community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It is an honor to have with us today Sri Jagdeep Dhankarji, the Honorable Vice President of India. Sir, I request you to kindly deliver your address. Good evening, all of you. And as the Chief has already indicated, it marks the beginning of a relationship that will be highly enriching for me. Honorable Chief Justice of Chhattisgarh, Justice Ramesh Shina, and also Chancellor of Hidayatullah National Law University. The Chancellor is lucky. 
I was governor of the state of West Bengal. I was chancellor of several universities, more than three dozen. But it was turbulent. He is lucky to have such an audience, such a vice chancellor. All are in sync. <clears throat> he comes from a distinguished lineage. His father could not take oath of the High Court judge, even after the appointment was so declared, on account of cruel hand of destiny. But he brings on the table rich experience of Allahabad High Court, the largest High Court of Bharat. When Allahabad High Court had centennial celebrations, they came out with two volumes of anecdotes. I'll share three of them so that your connect with him continues to be all the more strengthened. One, a division bench in Allahabad High Court, headed by a judge like him, would never interrupt a lawyer. It was a principle not to be violated ever. So a lawyer continued arguing for two and a half days, challenging validity of an act. After he had concluded submissions, the senior just said, Mr. Lawyer, have you concluded your submissions? Yes. Would you check up? The act has already been repealed. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> the second was, those were the times when we didn't have that kind of electricity or other mechanisms. So in Allahabad High Court, judges had cozy atmosphere. They had those kinds of mechanical fans, physically driven, and cuss cuss water is, is prowling there. So the senior judge found the ecosystem in the court very soothing and he thought he must attend to his sleep. The junior was a very disciplined judge. He never disagreed with the senior. He also followed the senior. The problem was for the lawyer. What should he do now? So those were the days when law books were very heavy. They are still, but not that heavy. So he managed to ensure that one of the heavy law books drops on the floor from the table. The senior says, yes, Mr. So-and-so, come, my lords, one at a time. He really comes from a very large high court, where judges, even those times, could not recognize each other. So a learned judge, a senior judge, was in his chamber. He was about to go to the court around 10.30 as is the time. He was with a friend. Another gentleman walks in robe. The judge stares at him as if there is an intrusion. And you know what the gentleman said? I'm a judge of this court. I'm sharing bench with you at 10.30. Therefore, I'm here. Friends, I advise you, all of you, to go through those two volumes of Allahabad High Court that carries these real events. Last one of them. In the corridor, one senior advocate asked another, who's arguing? Quick came the response, the learned judge. Then the second one asked, for whom? The response was there, I leave it at that. <laughs> you need to fully draw on the experience of the Chief Justice. I did it when I was so advised while being a very young president of Rajasthan High Court Bar at the age of 33. You don't wait for the physical form of those two volumes. You have enough of it on the Google platform. Professor Dr. V.C. Vivekanand, Vice Chancellor of this prestigious university, named after a great son of the soil. My predecessor in office, a distinguished Chief Justice, but the only person in the entire country and the entire history so far who discharged the functions of Chief Justice of India, Vice President of India, and also President of India. A man of great learning, 
A chairman Rajya Sabha, I have the benefit of his directives and the decisions he rendered. Now that you are in third decade, the beginning of third decade of this great university, you can take pride in the fact that you have a motto before you to live up to the high life, dignified life, life of knowledge and learning, which late Justice Hidayatullah led. Justice G. Raghuram, former director, National Judicial Academy, located in Bhopal, am I right, sir? You can have a deep connect with the National Judicial Academy also. It plays a pivotal role. And there is greater need now of interaction of young minds with those who are in the higher echelons of judiciary. Dr. Vipan Kumar, Registrar HNLU, and most important, members of the faculty, boys and girls, from this institute and some other institutes, my greetings to you. At the outset, I will seek indulgence of the Chancellor. I seek to invite students from Hidayatullah National Law University and also from those institutes that are present here to visit Indian Parliament as my guest. <laughs> Boys and girls, we have a structured mechanism. Your visit will be rewarding and fruitful. My official will be in contact with the Vice Chancellor. I hope it is done soon enough. <laughs> Legal profession has qualitatively gone in a different groove. There was a time when they used to say, sir, jokingly, it is difficult to pass in chartered accountancy, equally difficult to fail in law. <laughs> no longer. Legal education now is premium education and your institute is one of the best in the world. The avenues that are open to you, you just cannot imagine. I'll come to that a little later. So you, in a country of 1.4 billion, are privileged, honored to get such kind of quality education. You will have to live up to the expectations of your parents, your teachers and the country. I have no doubt you will do it. Friends, why I call you lucky? I'll tell you. I go back to my days. I'm the oldest perhaps here. He, he puts me to some challenge, <laughs> but I score over him by a few days. Um, look at the system which you have got now. There was a time when our power corridors were infested with corrupt elements. The elements, the licensing exercises done by them, the extra legally leveraged decision making. Nothing could happen without corruption being rewarded. And that was the greatest threat to talent. That denied every meritorious person of a level playing field in last 10 years. Power corridors have been totally sanitized of corruption. Those who extra legally leveraged decision making, that category has become extinct and have it from me. It can never be revived. You therefore have in the country that is home to one sixth of humanity, an ecosystem where there will be fair treatment, equitable treatment and corruption free governance. The second aspect, and which is equally important, democracy has a meaning only when there is equality before law. Democracy cannot fructify into good value mechanism unless all are equal before law. We now have a system. All are subject to law. No one is above law. 
I'm sure you must have seen contemporaneous events. But you as young people, boys and girls, must be on guard. You are thinking minds. You are discerning minds. How can people in this country take to streets when they get a notice from court? We are living in times, unfortunate times, that our, resist, our judiciary reflects a robust judicial mechanism in the world. Its independence is beyond question. We are lucky to have at the moment a Chief Justice of India who apart from being academically very brilliant, he is very passionate about values. He is more passionate about nurturing people like you. His heart and soul is in the growth of young minds. <clears throat> he has improved the ecosystem of judicial access which globally is being followed by many countries. I had the occasion to share dais with him recently where we had people from judicial systems of South, global South countries. And when they came to know what has been done in this country to facilitate justice availability, they were stunned. They have to follow it. So everything is now lined up. And you can just look back in last one year. Those who need justice no longer have to wait for justice. That is the spinal strength of our democratic values being nurtured by a sound judicial system. We have in this country a leadership that is bringing about impactful challenges to execution. Challenges which we started to think about I was elected to parliament in 1989. I was a minister in 1990. I had the occasion, painful occasion, a real pain that our gold had to be airlifted in a plane to be placed to two banks in Switzerland to sustain our financial credibility. But you are lucky to be living in times where India's rise in the Committee of Nations on Economic Front is being recognized. Just a decade ago, our country was taken to be one of the fragile five countries in the world, a burden on the globe. Our economy was totally, the world was concerned. And look at where we have come in 10 years. We today are the world's fifth largest global economy. We have overtaken UK who ruled over us for centuries. We have overtaken France. From Fragile Five, our journey to Big Five is a unique testament to the vision of the Prime Minister. Boys and girls, by 2030, we would have overtaken the economies of Japan and Germany. We'll be third largest global economy. Why I say so? All this has a meaning for you. You will have plethora of opportunities. Vistas will open for you. You have imminent people on the dais. Don't confine your thinking to traditional system of legal services. They are undergoing big change. You are imminently suited to contribute in policy evolutions. Only yesterday I was reflecting when ICC International Court of Arbitration had its centenary celebrations, I happened to be part of it in Paris. I was part of the commission also there for nine years and member of the court for three years. But now I find Indian talent doesn't lag behind. You are the ones, if you choose to take two, arbitral process seriously you'll have enough avenues you know more than I do being young minds disruptive technologies are overtaking us artificial intelligence one internet of things but this will bring legal challenges 
are challenges that will be required to be addressed by lightning speed. There never earlier was a concept of emergency arbitrators. There is one. All I mean to indicate is that you are at a time in history, in a country, the world is looking at us. There was a time when the world used to guide us. Now International Monetary Fund says India is a favorite destination, global destination of investment and opportunity. It offers fertile ground for innovation. World Bank has taken our country as one of those that offer to the entire world a model for emulation of digitization. And why not? Look at our statistics for 2022. Our digital transactions in 2022, boys and girls, were more than that of USA, UK, France and Germany. It doesn't stop here. Hold your breath. Four times the combined transactions of USA, UK, France and Germany, that is Bharat, our digital transactions. Look at our per capita internet uses. Look at it. It is more than that of USA and China taken together. This has been made possible because of the genius of our people. Our people have created such a rise for this country which is unstoppable. And the underlying theme for that is that there is an ecosystem now available in our country where every young boy and girl is fully enabled to exploit his or her talent, her potential, unleash energy, realize dreams and aspirations. The government is always in your aid. Our Amrit Kaal is our Gaurav Kaal. But in 2047, when some of us may not be around, you will be taking Bharat on your shoulders to Bharat 2047 as its foot soldiers and ensure Bharat being the most developed country of the world and a global leader. I'm sure that will happen. Now we see all around there is buoyancy, there is optimism. But in the process, we always have to be extremely careful about certain pernicious tendencies. It is not an option. It is must that we always keep interest of our nation ahead of anything else. We must believe in our country. We must be proud Indians, take pride in our global achievements, phenomenal rise and the respect we have earned in the world. The world looks at us now. There was a time when they used to render advice to us. Now our Bharat is settler of agendas for the entire world. That ecosystem was not there earlier. Friends, all this has happened because we have visionary leadership. I am not a stakeholder in politics. I am a stakeholder in governance. And more than me, young boys and girls are stakeholders in governance. Because the world belongs to you. Amongst all of us present here, you will have to live the longest. Therefore, being very critical stakeholders in governance, you have to be discerning minds. I do not know what happens to some people. They have very poor appetite for growth trajectory of our nation. Whenever something good happens in our country, either in the country or outside, they make an effort, mischievous effort, to set afloat narratives that are anti-national. You as brilliant young minds are fully unable to neutralize such forces. As a matter of fact, I'll put it to you. It is your duty, pious obligation, to do it. Your silence will ever resonate in your ears as the years will go by. 
you need to speak out. Nothing can be more dangerous in society. Nothing. Then, an informed mind, an intelligent mind, a mind who is taken to be very knowledgeable, trying to exploit ignorance of the people to generate political equity. I'll make reference to one epochal development that took place in the country on September 20 and 21, 2023. For a good three decades, efforts were made to ensure that we get women reservation bill passed. It could not happen for one reason or the other. But the Prime Minister could bring it about. And on 21st September, Rajya Sabha finally passed that bill, providing for horizontal and vertical reservation to the extent of one-third seats in Lok Sabha and state legislatures for women. Now, this can fructify only after delimitation. You all know it. We have a distinguished mind taking otherwise what happens to it. Why not 2024? I just uh, planted a sapling. Now I should go out and see why it has not become a big tree. It will take its own time. This is a epochal development, a great development. Secondly, to the girl students in particular, not only this reservation, but much beyond that, Sandaryan 3 success, when we talk about it, when we talk about 23rd August 2023, declared by our country as a National Space Day, when we remember with pride India being the only country on the planet to have landed on the South Polar Moon, where we put Tiranga and Shiv Shakti, Shiv Shakti point there, we remember the rocket woman. We remember now combat pilots. There is no walk of life where our girls have not outshone the boys. They have made impactful presence in the growth trajectory of this nation. We are in the front league of nations of the world in doing justice to our mothers and sisters. Friends, I wouldn't like to take more time, but I would say certain things. I have always been number one in my class. I was always worried what will happen if I don't come at number one. This was an obsession with me. I lived with it. Luckily, I retained number one. I learned too late in life that nothing would have happened. Heavens would not have fallen if I was not number one. Someone would have had the satisfaction of being number one and I would have made more friends. I would have involved with greater extracurricular activities and therefore my advice to you, never entertain tension and stress. Heavens have never fallen historically, why would they fall for you? Number two, Nothing is more dangerous in life to have a brilliant idea and you make your mind parking place for it. Merely because you think you may fail in the venture. Never fear failure. Think out of the box. Nothing has fructified globally that has changed the world ecosystem in first attempt. And therefore, if you have an idea, be innovative. Execute it. Don't fear failure. Failure will be a stepping stone of success and that is reflected in our Chandrayaan 3. I was governor of the state of West Bengal and it was September 2019. I had gone to the Science City. Boys and girls in this number were present. I had invited them. Chandrayaan 2 was to land around 2 a.m. I was with brilliant boys and girls like you, along with my wife. Chandrayaan 2 did not land successfully. I told them, boys and girls, we have succeeded. Before I could complete my sentence, Prime Minister of the country was on television with the scientists, telling them, we'll make it next time, this time the achievement has been really remarkable. We did succeed. You need hand-holding 
when you are making an endeavor of this kind our girls hockey team at tokyo performed gloriously couldn't make it the prime minister talked to each of them there were tears in their eyes but they knew that this hand holding would finally strengthen our achievements in the world of sports and games and we saw the results recently what i am telling you is that the opportunity which you got in this country is unique at a time when the world is looking at us you have to make most of it i find when i talk to young boys and girls particularly in the field of legal education they are thinking out of the box but they need to think really really out of the box because there are many opportunities as compared to other courses legal courses are turning out to be the best potentially very very rewarding in your distinguished career you have the occasion to intermix your credentials with other courses and luckily for you national education policy evolved by this country after more than 3 decades makes great provisions facilitating provisions i am sure your mentors the faculty will be able to guide you in that direction in this country bharat which has a civilizational history of more than 5000 years deep rooted culture during celebration of g20 the most successful event the nation has ever seen with on 60 locations in this country covering every state and union territory 200 interactions the world leaders were stunned when they came to grips with our culture you have to nurture it you have to believe in it any walk of life when you will look at our reservoir of knowledge in the shape of vedas and upanishads you will be started i had the occasion to indicate to the honorable minister for human resource in rajya sabha that make available copies of vedas to every member parliament because i find while we talk of vedas and upanishads many of us have not even seen them i call upon you please focus on them your horizon will be widened your thirst for knowledge will continue ever because even after you leave this institute your learning does not end it will ever continue friends i would conclude and then take some questions why this country has come to this level suddenly you may be in school a decade ago but we were overtaken by falling economy despondency growth potential not being visible and that was on one account inclusive ambitious action oriented and decisive leadership some people say at this position holding the august position of vice president of india is it not really saying something about the executive i am not on back foot very consciously i called our prime minister at a function in mumbai yukpurus why you young boys and girls analyze go to public domain find out the attributes whom we can label as yug purush after all there will have to be a yug purush at a particular point of time there can be no better place than bharat a man who has changed revolutionized lives of our girls just imagine banking inclusion explosion no one no one ever thought of it providing a toilet in every home taking care of dignity of women in particular getting water in every household and taking care of the tears by providing gas connections when state facilitates ownership of houses 
preferentially ownership is shared with the with the gender of the girls your gender coming back to farmers their upliftment coming back to youth making available an ecosystem without corruption having a system where no one is above law and these things have happened only on one count that is you have to be inclusive which means non discriminatory everyone has to be treated even handedly everyone has to be treated on merit pattern is cannot be the way out then you have to be ambitious in a country like ours you look at developed countries they don't have a history more than 300 500 or let's say 800 years we have more than 5000 years of history we have to be ambitious then we have to be action oriented to be ambitious inclusive without results makes no sense and this happens when you take decisions just travels last 3 4 months we had the world's one of the biggest convention centers bharat mandapam we had yashobhumi we had put chandrayaan there we have brought about epochal development in a special session of parliament reservation for women we are a country in the world that is focusing on disruptive technologies we are not waiting for others to innovate technology whether it is quantum computing we have quantum commission green hydrogen commission we are doing it with respect to 6g already we are one of the few countries in the world the number is not in double digit where we will roll out commercialization of 6g from 2025 onwards till 2030 so boys and girls there is everything available to you now you are in the best part of the globe you are in land of spirituality you are in land of culture you are in a land of rich history you only have to play on the front foot with the straight bat as per your aptitude before i conclude i have said one thing i invite you to visit indian parliament i would also with the indulgence of the chancellor the honorable chief justice of chatisgarh high court direct indian council of world affairs to have an mou with your institute that will offer you avenues indian council of world affairs i happen to be its chairman is headed as director by a brilliant lady ms thakur that mou will be signed this year i am aware we don't have even a month left but then the man who is changing the world for us the man who is changing our lives the man who is ambitious action oriented decisive i am sure we'll do it my office will settle the date with the office of the chancellor thank you so much boys and girls good to see It was indeed an insightful address. Two questions. Uh, there were an array of questions from the students which we have received. So I request the students whom, whose name I call upon to come near the stage, and I uh, read out the question. I call upon Miss Richa Arora, third year H N U. Kindly proceed near the stage. Her question is. India is often dubbed as a noisy democracy. Come on, 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 come As the chairman of uh, Rajya Sabha, uh, do you agree or disagree with that, sir? Well, I have generated a connect with you, <laughs> and it's going to be an unforgettable experience for me. <laughs> Our Constituent Assembly 
and as the students of law you will be able to go through it our constituent assembly engaged in formation of the constitution for 3 years and it comprised of people of great great eminence founding fathers of our constitution for 3 years they did not have a single disruption single disturbance in the house no placards no raising of slogans our founding fathers were deprived of what i see every day <laughs> they engaged in debate dialogue discussion deliberation and mind you the issues before them were far more contentious far more divisive they worked hard consensually i can understand there can be a difference point of view we must always be open to the other point of view more often than not the other point of view may be the correct point of view but if we put temple of democracy to sacrilege of this kind by engaging in disruption and disturbance we are not doing service to you i am doing all i can under my command to persuade fellow parliamentarians their productivity in the house must go up they must be a source of enlightenment for you they must bear a conduct which you can emulate but you have a role to play everyone here has a role to play social media is a great power you have to disapprove such a demeanor you have to indicate as a narrative that a parliamentarian is required to engage in debate discussion dialogue deliberation for public welfare i know there can't be easy answer to her question Thank you so much, sir. I next request Mr. Samir uh, Samir Shukla, third year HNLU, to kindly proceed. Pradam sir, sir, from being uh, such a great lawyer to being such a humble pub public servant, what inspired you, sir? Kindly tell us, sir. When the chief will bear me out, the year I was married, I became a lawyer. and legal profession is known as a jealous mistress <laughs> so my wife had to bear with the jealous mistress till president of india on 20th of july 2019 issued a warrant for me warrant of appointment warrant will unsettle anyone so on 20th of july i had again two situations that happened to be birthday of my wife and the warrant was signed on that day 20th of july 2019 was also the 50th anniversary of neil armstrong landing on the moon because these events will shake you are remembered for other reasons also but ever since i took oath as governor of state of west bengal and thereafter in the present assignment i have bid goodbye to the jealous mistress that has brought comfort to my wife but being in the profession having high satisfaction quotient for myself that was amply reflected in my bank accounts i feel the loss of it but then in a country like ours we have to sacrifice ourselves the chief justice here could have made money times more in any other walk of life some of you when you will take up government assignments you will find you can get money times more outside i saw reflected on the civil services day that every person who gets into the indian civil service makes a sacrifice 
because he or she has avenues outside where they will get geometric dividends here it is arithmetic taking care of inflation in a graded manner so that's one situation but then as long as the jealous mistress was with me i fully take took care of the jealous mistress but the moment uh, warrant was signed by the president i was visited with another, another consequence warrant itself is draconian second was suspension of my sanad so i am no longer technically in the legal profession as a lawyer thank you thank you sir once again a deep sense of gratitude you all are like my children trust me make a visit to indian parliament you can make it in batches there will be seamless coordination it will be rewarding experience for you and the upcoming session of parliament has enough homework for you we are dealing with three important pieces of legislation whereby will be shedding of colonial legal regime attend to the debates of the house and see the proceedings of the joint parliamentary committee i would send a copy of that committee report once it is laid before the house to the vice chancellor so that he can distribute amongst you all thank you so much thank you sir as we conclude this remarkable event let us rise for the national anthem पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल वंदा हिंद हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जगत तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे तव जय दाता जन जन मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे थैंक यू सर I request the audience to remain seated inside the auditorium